Hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know what day it is. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Laura's Dose of Stamping Therapy. I have some stamping to do this morning and I thought I would jump on and chat with you guys and stamp along with you because I showed you one of these projects and kept the other one as a secret and now it's time to reveal the other project. Ah, so here is a hot mess is probably what it looks like. I love this color combination and would have never put it together. Never in my wildest dreams, I don't think. Um, for some reason, Stampin' Up! It has really pushed me into loving Rococo Rose lately. Uh, that color I maybe picked up once or twice in the past year. And in the past month or two, I have picked it up like every single project I've done. So that's crazy. Um, but it's crazy how as seasons go on and things change or different projects come up, you like fall in love with different colors. Like, I mean, I super love my pinks. I super love my Bermuda Bay um, and pool party. But like other colors just sort of grab your attention. And this right here is grabbing my attention. So this color scheme is actually from one of the celebration items. It is the Oso oh Ombre Designer Series paper. Um, I don't think I have any full sheets of it because I've been using so much of it. But it is pink and Bermuda Bay on one side in ombre, of course. And the other sheets are green and purple. Okay, so... Um, Rococo Rose and Bermuda Bay and then these colors are Granny Apple Green and Blackberry Bliss so you can see that's the four colors the entire pack is those four colors so that's what gave me the inspiration for this so I started with that paper pulled out the four ink pads pulled out the four card stocks and then kind of let it go like I just kind of you know let my mind wander a little bit so I went with like a black and white theme and then this pop of color because I love black and white with a pop of color and I went with the dragonfly garden bundle which is this one here so the dragonfly garden stamp set and then the coordinating dragonfly punch and I will say I I don't know why, because it is floral, but I'm really just not digging the designer series paper for um, for the Dandy Garden and the Dragonfly Suite. So I don't know, maybe when it gets a little bit more summery, maybe it's the colors, maybe it's the patterns. I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm not really drawn to it. So that's why um, I hadn't played with it a lot until now but it's because I went a totally different direction and kind of found my like love for it and that sort of thing. Good morning, Karen. Welcome. If you're jumping on or you're watching and playing along, uh, then give me a shout out so I can say good morning and see who all is on. Okay, so I think it was episode two of Laura's Dose of Stamping Therapy that I did last week that I showed you guys this amazing card. And I said that I used it as a leftover piece of designer series paper. So I'm gonna show you today how I did this card and used a large piece of that six by six designer series paper. So we're gonna set those aside and I'm gonna show you, this is the six by six piece of paper. So of course it's a little expanded out because it's cut and I left like, you know, a little bit of a border. So this is the six by six designer series paper. This piece here is what I used for this card. And this piece here is what I used for this card. 
So I actually cut this down. This is like two inches and I cut it down to one and a half. So there's actually one long strip of that. I think I might have one of those over here. Nope, I don't. So really that little skinny strip of a half inch and this little strip is all I have left. So I could always use those as a little decoration piece on the inside of either of these cards. Or I could use it for a totally different card or maybe even a little belly band for a 3D project or something like that. Like you could always um, take like, you know, this little box and add it as like a strip down the center or something like that. Um, or if you're not a scrap hoarder like me, you can let it go and just toss it. It's all personal preference. I really like to use up my designer series paper, which is why I like coming up with card projects that use all of those pieces. Because what am I going to do with all of this except make another card? So why not? And if I already have all the supplies out, why not? Like, to me, it's just more fun that way. Hi, Dawn. Welcome. Got to make sure my comments are scrolling because they never do. Hi, Laura. You're loving this set? I have a big question for you on this set then. Um, okay, so that is how I did that. We're going to create this card. And we have those four colors. Um, I actually did this as one of my club cards. And no one picked Rococo Rose. But I will say, the other project that we did included Rococo Rose as well. So I think people were maybe like, I did the Rococo Rose, let's do a different color. Um, so we're going to be doing Rococo Rose today with this card. So here we have our designer series, or our card base, Rococo Rose. And then we're gonna layer on our designer series paper onto some basic black. And I went with just a sliver. I normally don't do eighths. So um, I only do eighths or what I like to call two ticks below or above. Um, because a lot of times, unless I have to actually like say what the number is, um, then I don't sit there and count eighths, but I will let you guys know um, because I love you guys so much. This is uh, three and seven eighths, a.k.a. two little tick marks below the four by five and one eighth, two little tick marks above the five. <laughs> I know that's not like real measurements, uh, but works for me. And um, yeah, I, I even had a crazy um, math, see, and I could always redo this and mix and match colors too. Um, but I do like that monochromatic look. Um, but Brad had to correct me. Where's my adhesive? Brad had to correct me on my lacking of math skills this morning because I was trying to calculate, today we are 32 weeks pregnant. So I was trying to calculate how many days that was, and I had that off. I was like, I'm confused. Yesterday I said it was 58, I think. And I really think it's 48. <laughs> no. I think it's just my wishful thinking. So then I have some of this Whisper White Polka Dot Ribbon which I like it because it's very soft and subtle, but I also don't like it because it's very delicate. Like if you pull really, really tight, it really like pulls the ribbon, if that makes sense. Like kind of like stretches it out. So you kind of have to have that delicate balance of like I pulled it tight enough, don't go any farther. And I actually just cut this straight across. I didn't do like a little angle or anything because I didn't really feel like it was like an elegant ribbon um, or anything like that. I just kind of wanted it blunt, I guess. And this can go to the left or to the right. I think I did, yeah, I did different ones. 
to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. It doesn't matter. So if you ever want to move your ribbon, just kind of squeeze your cardstock and rotate it however you wish. I did add this to my card front with Stampin' Dimensionals because I love Stampin' Dimensionals. Oh, I have a big question for you guys, especially as I'm like pulling my hair out of my face. Um, who has a good solution for static in the dryer, not using dryer sheets? Because for some reason, dryer sheets like irritate Claire's skin. I don't know why. But they do, and or at least when we stop using them, it goes away. So I'm pretty sure they do. And um, winter time is here, and static is in full force. Now, like a lot of times with like an outfit of mine, or even sometimes with my hair, I spray static guard into my brush or on my clothes. But um, I don't necessarily want to be spraying static guard into the dryer. In fact, that might actually be like a flammable issue. Um, I don't know so I'm not doing that but yeah if you have any good ideas for static reduction in the dryer without dryer sheets let me know okay so for the inside white panel I'm going to find my dragonfly oh here it is I was like I thought I brought them all over but maybe not and Rococo Rose And I'm going to stamp one on the inside on this Whisper White piece. And I actually, I have two of these cards to do. And so I should have been doing both of them side by side. But I didn't. And then I need a scrap piece of white to stamp and punch out. So after last week's video, I posted asking, oh, I still need a greeting too. I posted asking what your favorite colored dragonfly was, and you guys shocked me because it was not anything close to the same as mine. <laughs> and so I was just so surprised, but I love when that happens. So there is this one that's just stamped in Rococo Rose. And then there's this one that is stamped in black and then colored with Stampin' Blends of Rococo Rose. And then there's a different color, but then there's this one where I stamped it in black. And then I use the image from the stamp set, which is kind of that like, fuzzy little background thing um, that is stamped over the wings. So it's this image. And you guys did not like that one at all. Everyone loved the Stampin' Blends one. Like major consensus, you know, skyrocket, there's no contest. And I was so surprised because this was actually probably my least favorite. I felt like it was just too bold and perfect which is so weird I'm gonna blame it on the pregnancy because normally I don't like like watercolor or messiness because it's out of the lines and it's not perfect and you can't achieve it twice and that whole thing I like a dark color like I was the one that broke crayons as a kid um, I like a dark color I like it in the lines I like all of that but yeah I didn't like this one for all of those reasons. So blame it on the pregnancy, who knows? Okay, so now that we have our dragonflies, remember you always want to stamp first and then punch. I hold my punch upside down like this, slide it in, and I sort of come down on the punch just a hair. Just enough that it's not going to fall out, but that I'm not actually punching it. And then that sort of like holds it in place while I either take my hand and put it over here 
or adjust it or anything like that and then punch. So I'm totally not left-handed. I also use the edge as a guide. Like I'm not just like floating out here hoping it works. I like use the edge of the punch as a guide and I kind of have my thumb here and find, you know, like I'm like flexing my thumb to get it into the right spot. And then like I, I've slightly closed it. I don't know how well you can see a slightly closed. And then punch. So like this is open and like this would be slightly closed. If you could actually see a difference between those two. So yeah. So yeah, Laura, my um, question for you, it's more dramatic and you like the lighter one. That was my big question for you is how much you have used this image when playing with this stamp set that you love. Um, are you loving this image or are you not loving this image? Let me know. I thought I lost both of those. Okay, so I'm going to put these on the insides of my cards. Can't find my adhesive. So how's the weather where you guys are? It is currently snowing and um, I'm having a very internal struggle. I'm not like a huge fan of snow. It kind of gives me like anxiety a little bit over the fact of like I just want to be safe and I just want to, um, you know, like if we have to go anywhere, then do you cancel, do you not cancel, which isn't really the case this year. Um, but I think I'm still just having a little bit of that anxiety. Um, Clara also has school today, so I'm like, are they going to cancel? Do I need to like, you know, sit by my phone all day? And really, like, I think we're supposed to get like a dusting to an inch, so... Not a big deal, Laura. You got this. It's okay. Um, but I think I just still have that, that overwhelming anxiety, even though it doesn't really apply this year. And I am actually wanting snow because, one, we're not going anywhere, so why not? And, two, Claire has a snowsuit and would love to play in the snow. And we bought a sled, so we need to use that. Although... I will probably be taking pictures from like the front porch or the um, the garage because I'm pretty sure if it snows a decent amount and I bundle up and go out in the snow, if I fall over, I'm going to need a lot of help getting back up. <laughs> it's going to be kind of like um, a Christmas story. Is that the movie where he's like, I can't put my arms down? Yeah, that's going to be me because – with this belly and a ton of clothes on, not happening. Okay, so now we have our black squares. These are scallop squares that I used from the layering squares dies. So I used this one. Pretty much how I did this is I took my dragonfly and angled him a little well actually first I did it like straight on and found out that he was x amount of measurement he is like two and a quarter so I wanted to go a little bit less because I kind of wanted him to fall off just a hair and I was going to angle him so he's you know not fully falling off so I went ahead with two and then I took my two inch square and went over to the dies and sort of placed it on how big of a border do I want. And that's how I landed on this one. And then to add a little bit of extra texture that you guys probably can't even see, but I actually embossed the white square with this embossing folder. This embossing folder is subtle but textured, but kind of cool. It's kind of one of those weird ones where it does give a little bit of texture, um, but like sometimes you're like, does it? I didn't even see it. So um, yeah, it's, it's awesome because I feel like it can be used for every style of card because it's just that little bit of texture. And I love embossing folders for texture. They just, they add so much to a card without adding bulk and layers and 
more to it, but yet they do add more. Gotta love my non-scrolling comments. So you are correct, Laura, in saying that it really kind of seems to only fit one side. Um, it wasn't meant to fit both sides perfectly. It's kind of meant to just do this random shadowy background. Now you will notice that the one side, it does seem to fit like almost perfectly um, and that the other side it doesn't. But if you stamp them both down, you almost don't notice that it does or does not match perfectly like there is no perfect match for that image it's supposed to just be a fuzzy dusty background if that's a thing but I understand it can be kind of frustrating but you just kind of have to wing it like on the one you're like okay I think it goes like right here and on the other one you're like whoa where does this go and you just got to wing it and then you're like oh yeah you can't even tell So that was meant to be. Ooh, I don't know why I'm taking this one off when I don't have that one ready yet. Do you guys like monochromatic stuff where it's kind of all one color? Or do you prefer a card with different colors and by all one color I guess I kind of mean black is not a color um I don't know it's kind of a base like I kind of don't consider crumb cake um a color either that's always kind of like my base or white or vanilla um those are just like base colors um but yeah do you like would you mix and match these colors? Like do the blue and green together, do the purple and Rococo Rose together, or do you like keeping it all Rococo Rose, all Bermuda Bay? I feel like lately I've been going a lot more monochromatic. And I don't know if it's just because I'm lazy and don't wanna get out a lot of supplies, or whether I'm just really liking a certain color that day, or what it is. Again, We'll blame it on the pregnancy. Monochromatic. Which folder is this? This is, I think it's the subtle embossing folder. But let me check. I'm pretty sure it's called subtle. Let me see. Yes. The subtle 3D embossing folder is what that one is called. I can get you a link for that um, after the video is over. I'm going to scoot this one to the left. No one has any help for me on static. I was really hoping you guys would come through. Surely somebody's got a good idea out there. We're just power through and wait till spring because we are almost to the halfway point of winter. The halfway point is February 3rd in case you were counting down or excited like me. Because I'm excited but the first day of spring is also in March and so that gets me excited because the baby's coming in March so the closer we are to spring oh I totally did dimensionals on the black layer as well so I I don't think I'm gonna do dimensionals on my dragonflies because I feel like that's three layers of dimensionals and that might be overdoing it a little um, on the original though this is what happens when I'm talking too much 
on the original, I did dimensionals on the black piece, and then I did dimensionals on the Bermuda Bay on the dragonfly. And the black is on their flat. Whoops. Hi, Liz. Well, I hope you're having fun. I I could use a pool right now. That sounds like fun. A friend of mine recently went like the next town over um, to a hotel just for one night just to like go on a vacation and get out of the house and let the kids play in the pool. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like so much fun. Although I don't know that I would fit into a bathing suit at all right now. So probably not. So here I did one to the left and one to the right. And I did my dragonflies angled in a different direction as well. And then there's the inside. May good things grow all year long. But we're not done yet. Now we're going to take rhinestones, Rococo Rose Stampin' Blends. This is the dark one, but you could always use the light one. I use the, like the marker fat tip and just go over the rhinestone. Just sort of swizzle around. I do recommend doing it on, um, on this before putting them on there because sometimes you kind of fall off of the rhinestone and onto the piece of paper, which like you can see, there's like little splotches of ink and stuff there. So I'd hate to have you do that on your project um, and then have there be like a little ring or anything. Claire helped me clean up from Stamp Club, so things are kind of all over the place. I knew where all the ink pads were that I used at Stamp Club because she put them in backwards or upside down. So I'm like, oh, yep, that one, that one, and that one. But she was a big help, so I appreciated that. There's that one. So I'm using three, and I'm kind of just putting them randomly all over. Whoop, that one fell off. There we go. I was totally a dry or a dryer sheet user prior to. So we got these wool balls, but I don't really think they're for static, or at least they're not working. These aren't. Um, like they say you can put essential oils in them. Maybe it's the essential oils uh, that help reduce the static. Um, but I don't know that I necessarily want like an extreme smell or anything. And um, they mostly just like beat the laundry to make it dry faster which I actually think it does which is kind of cool um but they're not helping with the static okay so are wool dryer balls supposed to help static and I just bought some bad ones hmm I just don't know so yeah let me pull back in all of those let me know what your favorite color is. Is it the Granny Apple Green, Blackberry Bliss, Bermuda Bay, or Rococo Rose? I kind of think I like the Bermuda Bay the best. But then I'm like, no, I really like the Blackberry Bliss. Oh, but I really like the... So... These actually don't have a greeting on the front. You could always stamp a greeting down on that ombre paper, um, either in black or if you did the lighter side of the ombre paper, you could do it in that same color, um, you know, granny apple green on the granny apple green. Uh, so that's a personal preference on if you really want a greeting on the front of your card. Make sure to stamp that before you actually assemble it because I did put dimensionals on this layer. So you wouldn't want to stamp it afterwards because the stamp would bump bump over those dimensionals and might not come out as a clear image. 
Um, one of the other things that I wanted to share was this stamp. I actually have done this a few times now. And... Sorry, my phone was ringing or buzzing. Um, I've done this a few times where I've stamped this down. And I rocked a little, or I didn't even feel like I was rocking, but it's a sensitive stamp apparently. And I got a little bit of that, but if you're punching it out, it's okay. Because when you punch it out, it punches closer. So if that happens and, um, and you feel like you need to redo it a million times to make that not happen, you're okay if you're punching it out. So don't worry about that. Happens to the best of us. Oh, so we have a in consensus with this. We're liking the green, the purple, and the pink. <laughs> and no one likes Bermuda Bay except for me. So I guess we've got all of our bases covered and they're all, they're all loved. That is, oh, here, I did want to show you guys. I have this stamp, which is in that same set. And I did stamp that on the inside of some of them as well, instead of the dragonfly to kind of mix it up a little bit more. So that's another awesome option that you can do. But that is all I have for today is um, those fun dragonfly cards. I did leave a link in the description box for the dragonfly bundle, which is the stamp set and the punch. And then, of course, don't forget that the um, designer series paper is Oso oh Ombre. And if you were one of my 2020 customers, then any order that you place in 2021, um, your first one, you will get some rhinestones from me. So... There, I got you covered on the rhinestones. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Don't forget, celebration is still going on. Um, you get a free item for every $50 you spend, and that runs through the end of February. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day, a happy Wednesday. Stay, stay safe and warm out there, um, especially if you are farther up north because I think they're getting a lot more snow. Um, and if you're down south and don't, normally get snow and a little bit makes the whole world panic then um then stay safe to you guys as well i totally get it i feel like we're somewhere in the middle like if we got you know eight inches i would be like oh my gosh but you know getting a dusting isn't really that crazy but i know down south it is crazy so um i totally get that so i hope you guys all have a wonderful day Happy stamping. Um, today's the perfect day to snuggle up and, uh, and work in your craft room. So enjoy that. Love, hugs, and prayers to all of you guys, and I'll see you next time.